carbs at Costco. Has Thomas lost his mind? He's doing a carb video. I haven't lost my mind. I just figured we gotta find what the clean carbs are at Costco. A lot of the carbs that we're gonna find aren't that clean, but a lot of them will still fit the profile. Chickpea flour, sweet potato flour, stuff like that. So let's find the carbs that are low glycemic and have the least negative impact so that you can, well, have your crackers and eat them too. Let's go. Not all carbs are created equal. We have to find the ones that fit the bill for what our goals are. And we also have to look at other pieces. What are these carbs combined with? Sometimes we might find what seems to be a good carb, but then it's combined with something else, a preservative or a type of sugar that completely just discredits the rest of the carbohydrate. So this isn't everything you're gonna live by. It's just some extra little things that you can have in your pantry. Okay, let's jump right in here. Let's just. So at first glance, I think coconut. What's up here? Is this gonna be good? Okay, dark chocolate chips, coconut butter, or cocoa butter, milk fat. No, wheat flour, straight out the gate. So one of the biggest common themes you're gonna see here, which you see in a lot of my videos anyway, is avoiding gluten. So I'm just gonna get that right out on the table immediately. We typically wanna have gluten out of the equation, so I'm not gonna recommend much stuff that has gluten. Um, what's in these sea salt chips here? Now, still looking multi-grain <laughs> so we think oh this is a grain I, I hear that grains are bad but we hear multi-grain and something in our brain just tells us from when we were kids like multi-grain bread it's healthy so why do multi-grain we automatically think healthy the multi-grain is going to be corn oh, and then we mix it with these terrible oils oh but it has brown rice and then it has chia seeds and a grain and seed blend which is flax millet brown rice I mean, there's a couple things like the flax and the chia which might lower the glycemic index of this a little bit but it's not worth getting Annie's a lot of times markets themselves as a healthy carb, a healthy brand, healthy brand of chip. Um, okay, expeller pressed sunflower oil. So it's a plus. When you see uh, expeller pressed, it means that they've essentially almost compressed the oil in the way that they press it, in the way that they turn it into a usable oil. So it's usually a more stable oil, which is nice to see. Uh, we've got whole grain, yellow cornmeal, cornmeal, cheddar cheese, organic whey. Uh, so this gluten-free, that's kind of nice. Um, I mean, it's definitely not something you want. So what I typically would say when it comes down to carbs is for the most part, do what you can to limit the combination of fats and carbs. I don't say that you should always never ever have any carb and any fat combined, but generally speaking, if you combine fats and carbs, you're going to increase the absorption of the fat into the adipose tissue simply because the insulin that comes with the carbohydrates spikes and that causes the cell to accept other nutrients, including fat. So when you spike your insulin with the carbohydrate, then the fat comes in along for the ride. So it's potentially easier to store it. Plus the mitochondria, which is our energy powerhouse, ends up uh, getting a little bit confused. There are studies that document that the mitochondria functions much better when it has one clear fuel source, not when you're giving them both at one time, carbs and fats. So a lot of the carbs that I'm gonna say are good healthy carbs are gonna be ones that don't have a lot of fats in adjunct. So, um, but that being said, I still wanna just help point out which carbs are decent and which ones are totally bad. All right, this is kinda cool. Let's see what's in this. So this is, oh, these are parsnips, taro root, sweet potato, and batata, which is similar to sweet potato. And what do we have here? Okay, a seasonal mix of root vegetables, sweet potato, taro, burrata, and parsnip, expeller pressed canola oil, I uh, wish it wasn't that, but at least it's expeller press, and or sunflower oil, sea salt, beet juice concentrate. So the carb content is going to be high because you're taking a starch and you're essentially drying it and compressing it. But as far as the clean carbs go for like a chip, into 669, compare that to, I mean, you spend a dollar to a dollar fifty more. Yeah, and you're getting something that's actually clean. So again, it's not perfectly clean, but it's totally not pure junk. Just wish they used a slightly cleaner oil, like an avocado oil that could handle the high heat. Uh, I'm gonna get that, that makes the cut. A lot of people have asked about Skinny Pop. It's still popcorn. It's still <laughs> mixing a fat and a carb and a very high glycemic one that's been puffed. Uh, and I'll explain that in a minute. So what happens when you have uh, starch molecules, when you heat a starch molecule, the starch molecules expand. So imagine that my fingers are starch molecules. 
and all of a sudden I heat them. Well, what happens when you heat things? They expand. So the starch molecules are individual glucose molecules bound together like this, and then you heat them and they expand. So instead of your body having to digest and cleave off each individual glucose molecule with a slow digesting carbohydrate, the puffing process or a heating process will expand those glucose molecules into individual glucose molecules anyway, expand the starch uh, chain. So you turn a relatively low glycemic carb into a high glycemic carb just by how you cook it or puff it. So really wild. So with popcorn, you're puffing a grain and you're expanding the starch molecules and it's a very high glycemic. And what do you usually combine with popcorn? Butter, right? You're combining a fat, high glycemic carb with a fat. That's why I typically avoid that stuff. All these bad boys have gluten in them. What's this organic everything cracker? It's gluten free. Stone ground, okay. So again, there's a lot of good options here. The reason this one doesn't make the cut is because I know we will find things that are better. Okay, this is, the first ingredient is stone white uh, ground corn. That is basically, it's a corn chip with a few pieces of seeds, garlic and onion in it. it it's, it's a little deceiving if you ask me. I feel really short today for some reason. I don't know why, I just feel short. Um, you ever have those days like where you, like some days you feel tall, some days you feel short? It's just weird. Okay, almond flour crackers. What's this? Uh, nut and seed flour blend. Tapioca starch, cassava flour, organic sunflower oil, sea salt, organic... Ooh, nice. This is not bad. So it's a nut and seed flour blend, so it's almonds, sunflower seeds, and flax seeds. So we already have almonds and sunflower seeds, which are high omega-6, but at least we counteract them with some flax seeds that are very high omega-3. Um, this is a great little thing. Okay, the organic sunflower oil, yes, it's a fat and a carb, but it's a relatively low glycemic carbohydrate. And a lot of these carbs, I think, are coming from the almond flour and then sunflower seed flour and stuff like that. The tapioca starch is going to add a carb, but it is largely a resistant starch that doesn't really digest. So tapioca starch is unique because even though it's technically a fiber in some ways, it's also what is called just that, a resistant starch because it's resistant to breakdown. You have RS1, RS2, RS3, all kinds of different resistant starches that don't actually break down and they draw uh, a little bit of a fermentation effect in the gut. That's why sometimes you get bloated because what's happening is you are fermenting and growing bacteria in the gut. So although the ingredient profile isn't perfect, at least it's organic, and at least the sunflower oil is organic, which does make a difference, and it will probably fill you up rather quickly. So I'm gonna get some of those. And they're right next to these, <laughs> which are wheat flour, enriched wheat flour, with some niacin, and oh, that's great. That's so nice of them. They enriched it with some B vitamins. Um, and then we have these Milton's, also from the same company, gluten-free chips here. Brown rice flour, corn flour, gluten-free oats, potato starch, potato granules, high oleic sunflower oil. See the difference in these ingredients here? If you're gonna have a carb snack, look at those ingredients versus these ingredients, okay? So we have yeast and sorbitan monosterate, we have whey protein concentrate, all this stuff to make these more mass-produced. These are more expensive, they are, but your body is worth it, ladies and gentlemen, it just is. So that doesn't make the cut. Okay, let's go find some more carbs. Carbs, 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 carbs. Those look like little brains. Um, every fiber of my being wants to uh, look at the keto items. What about these guys? I'm guilty of giving these to my son sometimes because he just really likes them as a little treat, like every now and then. We're talking like maybe once a month or so. Uh, organic whole grain brown rice. Still got a grain there that's not the best. At least it is brown, so it slows it down a little bit in terms of digestion. Organic brown rice syrup, organic cane sugar, and uh, agar, or agar, depending on how you want to say it. Is it super, super clean? It's not. Um, it's not what I would consider the best carbs at Costco, but people have asked about them, and I have been open about my son trying them before, so figured I'd at least mention it. Let me see what we got over here, since there was, someone had let the cows out of the barn for a minute on this aisle. Um, those have a bunch of gluten, so those aren't even a go. Uh, keto items, cool. Oh, here's the lupini beans. Um, this is kind of cool. This is a great low carb item, but doesn't necessarily work well uh, as a carb because look at three grams of carbs, three grams of fiber. That's zero grams of net carbs. A perfect snack. People think beans. Oh, that's carbs. No, this is one of my top keto finds in one of my other videos. Uh, ooh, okay, so chickpea flour. These are Hippie's Organic Nacho Chickpea Puffs. 
four grams of protein, USDA certified organic. So we have first ingredient, chickpea flour, followed by rice flour. Yeah. See, if it was just chickpea flour, which there are companies that have just straight up chickpea flour, chickpeas are some of the lowest glycemic carbohydrates that you can have. Now, they have a good degree of fermentation effect in the gut too. So sometimes people that aren't used to it, they have chickpea flour and they get bloated and they get a little bit gassy. I don't mind it, okay? It's just, it gives me more room in the bed and it's, it's all good. So rice flour kind of kills that. I wish we took a low glycemic flour, combine it with a high glycemic flour, kind of defeats the purpose. Tapioca starch, some pea hull fiber, some cane sugar. Otherwise, the ingredients are fairly clean, except for when we get to yeast extract. I've talked about before, yeast extract is another way of saying uh, monosodium glutamate. It's just not a synthetic version of it. Um, lights up your brain, makes you feel like something tastes good when it doesn't necessarily taste as good, or it makes you want to eat more. Very common in snack items. So this one does not make the cut, but let's see if we can find some other things that might be a little bit more uh, straight up full on chickpea. Oh, and people ask about these. Green pea snack crisps. I think we're gonna run into a similar thing. Yep, organic green peas followed by canola oil that's not even expeller pressed. Organic rice, nope. Plantain chips. Plantains, uh, there was a time period when my wife who suffered from um, Hashimoto's thyroiditis, so it's an autoimmune condition that affected her thyroid. Uh, she was going through a transformation similar to a time that I was going through my 100 pound transformation. And uh, plantains were a big part of what was called the autoimmune paleo protocol because you could actually make a lot of cool things with them. And I do know that these are really good clean ingredients. Organic plantains, organic coconut oil, and Himalayan pink salt. Now, someone's gonna look at this and they're gonna say, Thomas, you say don't combine fats and carbs, and you're right. There's 17 grams of carbs and eight grams of fat. However, there is a caveat. There's two things to factor in. Coconut oil is a saturated fat, so it's going to digest slower. And plantains are a relatively slow digesting carb. So you have two slow digesting things. And in the world of having carbs, we, we can't be super picky. I usually give that advice to people that are doing low carb diets when they say, hey, if you're having carbs, be careful not to have a bunch of fats with them. So at least the fat choice here is better. So I highly recommend you get these if you're looking for just a little snack to have when you're not on keto or when you just want a healthier, healthier carb snack. Which leads me to something else. These bear apple chips. As far as cleanliness goes, straight up organic apples. That's it, that's all there is to it. But we run into a big problem with this. Listen, if you're going to have fruit, you're probably best to not have it in a dried or dehydrated form. Because all you are doing is concentrating the fructose. Fructose goes into the liver and it processes through what's called the portal vein into the, directly into the liver out of the small intestine. And you can only manufacture or process about 40 to 50 grams of carbohydrate from fructose per day-ish, depending on how big you are, before it gets converted into fats via a process called DNL, de novo lipogenesis. De novo lipogenesis literally means creation of new fat. And you will create new fat cells because of too much fructose. And guess where that fat gets deposited? Well, it gets created in the liver and it dumps it right outside of the liver, contributing to potentially a fatty liver, but even more so, that's visceral fat and things that we don't want. This mask is driving me crazy. It's just wanting to fall off today. I think my chin's bigger today. Been hanging out with Jay Leno. These are kind of cool. Uh, these are actually, a, they have a bunch of garbage in them, but it's kind of a funny product. Higher carb than you would have thought. Anyway, let's move along. Goji berries. <clears throat> The issue we have with goji berries, I mean, they are packed, packed, packed with antioxidants, but when they're dried like this, what do you run into? You run into concentrated sugars again, okay? 13 grams of sugar, pure fructose. I get it, but you're better off to get like a dried goji powder, uh, order that online, get on Amazon, something like that. You're gonna be better off. That way you can add it to a smoothie and get the antioxidant benefit and the flavonoids without all the sugar that's essentially counteracting all the antioxidants that you're working towards getting anyway. There's those brain things again. Stacy's pita chips, they kind of lure you into thinking that it's something healthy, but it's not. Look at, they're sampling the keto clusters today. That's kind of interesting. These things, the kind of things I'm getting, healthy carbs, healthy snack items to have around for your family, for you, they're all things that you can get through Thrive Market. There is a link down below. So they are an online membership-based grocery store. Now, 
you can get so many cool things there and they get delivered right to your doorstep, which makes it super, super, super convenient. I think that that guy watches the channel because he totally clicked around. Anyway, that's cool. There's a special link down below, that way you can check them out. So they also have this really cool app that you can scan a barcode and it will tell you if you can get the item cheaper at Thrive Market, which is just super, super convenient. So any kind of items that I recommend, whether it's keto, whether it's intermittent fasting, paleo, I have my recommended items there at Thrive Market, and you can check them out. So there's a special link down below. So if you're in an area of the United States where you can't go to a Costco, you can't go to a Whole Foods, it just works out perfect. Anyway, down below in the description, big thank you to Thrive Market for helping this channel out. All right, this looks cool. These grain-free granola bars. This is almost more of a, I wouldn't even consider this a carb. This is more of a fat. Almonds, pecans, some maple syrup, some organic honey, unsweetened coconut, pumpkin seeds, organic unrefined, stellar clean ingredients. The issue I have with this is, is, is more just me being nitpicky more than anything, is it kind of sits you in that gray area. Like it's not really a keto bar because it's too high a carb. It's not really a carb bar because it's too low in carb and high in fat. So it's kind of like, it's a paleo bar, flat out. It's paleo. I mean, it's paleo certified. Uh, if you wanted like a little like cheat kind of thing, I think I mentioned it in my Costco cheat haul, this could be perfect. Uh, I wish they used a slightly different uh, fat profile. I wish they used maybe like almonds and macadamias, but the issue with like macadamia nuts in bars, they're so high in fat, it's hard to even get substance out of them uh, because they just oil out and leak out. I kind of wish they used a little bit of a different sweetener than just double fructose whammy there with honey and, and maple syrup, but I really just like the profile overall. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to consider it. <clears throat> I'm not going to get it because what actually is pushing me over is that. That's expensive for that. So if I'm on the fence of something, usually my next thing that I look at to kind of decide one way or the other it's gonna be the cost, and that's expensive. So I'm gonna pass on that one. Um, pumpkin seed vanilla. Nope, cane sugar, soy oil, already out of the equation there, sorry. And this is that same company, and I shouted them out in the cheat meal video, I know. This is the same kind of thing. It's, it's almost the exact same ingredients minus the pecans. Wait, except the pecans are further down. That's all it is. So it's a reallocation of ingredients into more of a granola versus a granola bar. Uh, a little bit cheaper per ounce because they didn't have to press it into a bar and probably put it in a package. So, which, which is great, but uh, I wouldn't consider that, again, when I look at the cost, a healthy carb, so to speak. Coach's oats, um, USDA organic. These are not gonna be gluten-free oats, yeah. You have to look specifically. Oatmeal, you would think is technically gluten-free, but you have to look for gluten-free oats specifically. Now, the nice thing about oatmeal, super high in soluble fiber, so it's gonna digest very slow, and you can even get away with having a small amount on keto, and it usually doesn't kick you out of keto because the soluble fiber has a very powerful effect at drawing water into the colon, slowing the digestion, and also slowing down the absorption of the carbs, which potentially stop ketogenesis. What is a thin canto noodle? Canto? What is this? It's a kind of noodle. Ah, it's wheat. It's a wheat noodle. What is this? Ramen. Is this going to be ramen with... Oh man, that ingredient. <laughs> it's like, you like, let me see the ingredients and you like open the scroll. <laughs> Vietnamese pho, which I talked about in another video. I think this has a bunch of other stuff in it, but it is at least gluten-free. Uh, it's just got the soy sauce, which has uh, the wheat in it. So it's not gonna be a gluten-free option. So it's not gonna even make the cut at all. All right, we got some pasta over here. I think we'll find something good here. First one to talk about is this organic edamame spaghetti. If you want a low carb item, it fits the bill. 21 grams of carbs, 12 of which is fiber. Organic soybeans is the main ingredient. Now, now, the bigger issue that we get out of soy comes from the soy oil, comes from the fat. The big piece is, if we look at how organic soy is, it's definitely a different makeup than the 98% of the rest of the soy, which is heavily GMO'd, heavily processed to the point where it changes the, the structure. Okay, now, I am not a big fan of soy to begin with, but if you're looking for a little pasta treat just to do something different, 
it's not the end of the world, okay? Sea Point Farms makes some other like edamame snacks and stuff like that. I have had this before. And again, it's one of those things where if you're not making it a regular part of your diet, it's actually something you could have and get away with having a little bit of pasta. And I will tell you, it tastes really good. Um, it's a good price. It is soy, so don't beat me up too much on that. But also, if you're doing a vegan protocol, that is a good amount of protein. So if you're doing vegan keto or you're just trying to get some protein, not a bad source. So I am going to get that because it does make the cut as what I would consider a clean carb. There's a lot that we can talk about with soy, okay? Don't get me wrong. I'm not... What we need to look out for more is the hidden soy, the soy isoflavones, the, the, the soy lecithin, the little bits that add up that are in your daily life all the time, contributing to estrogen buildup, all this stuff. Whereas little bits like that, when you have a consolidated meal, it's a different story. So quinoa contains a lot of what are called saponins. Now, God, this thing is really falling on my face a ton today. So quinoa contains a lot of what are called saponins. And these saponins will make it so that you end up having gut distress. Have you ever noticed when you have quinoa versus another grain, you feel bloated? You feel really bloated. Sometimes you feel like almost nauseous bloated. That's because of the saponins. And it takes a while to adjust to that. Are there better grain options? Yes. I would typically lean towards like teff, T-E-F-F, but it, we don't seem to have it here at Costco, so it makes it a little bit tough. I'm not saying that quinoa is bad, it's just there's other grain options that are slightly better. Um, I tend to get a little bit of an upset stomach with it. I feel bloated, I don't feel good, and I actually retain water for like two or three days after it. And I've talked to many people that feel the same way. I'll gain like three pounds in water retention. Very odd. Ooh, these lentils are kind of cool. I don't know what happened here. Looks like the truck crashed. Um, so we have water, black lentils, red, red kidney beans, cream, tomato paste, dried onion, butter, sunflower oil, salt, cumin. That is very clean. Okay, a little bit of sunflower oil. But okay, so if you look at per serving, you've got six grams of fat, 17 grams of carbs, six of which is um, fiber. And it's all coming from black lentils, which are nice high in protein. Red kidney beans, which have an interesting ability to sort of neutralize or limit some of the absorption of other starches in the first place. So pretty darn good stuff. It adds a little bit of fat coming in from the cream more so than the sunflower oil. So when we look at the six grams of fat, we know at least three are saturated. So at least three grams of those fats are coming from the cream. I would rather have cream than I would sunflower oil. How crazy is that? Thomas would rather you have heavy cream than sunflower oil. At least the cream, I know where it's coming from to some degree, even if the cow has been eating grains and soy. Sunflower oil is straight up omega or straight up omega sixes and straight up polyunsaturated fats. So most of that fat is probably coming from cream. I'd probably say four grams of that fat is from the cream and two is probably from the sunflower oil. So you have to cross reference. If there's something like this, like cream and sunflower oil, sunflower oil is not a saturated fat. So we know that, right? I'm gonna get these, that makes the cut, but let me find a cleaner box. Okay, and now let's check out some of these. I saw you from across the room, my dear friend. I am a huge fan of beets, and if you are a veteran of my channel, you know that I published a video flat out talking about beets in general and how even if you're not doing a carbohydrate-rich diet, even if you're doing keto, you could have some of these post-workout. First of all, one beet is only seven grams of carbs. It's a perfect blend of just enough fructose and just enough glucose to help restore muscle glycogen via these different GLUT5 and GLUT1 transporters, okay? That is a fancy way of saying that it's just the right ratio of sugars, of carbs in there, where they absorb into your muscle glycogen and restore yourself after a workout significantly better than other ones. Plus, betaine, as well as these other antioxidants, but they also are a precursor to what is called nitric oxide. Okay, they help produce what's called nitric oxide synthase, which produces NO2. If you've ever purchased a, a supplement to help you get a bigger muscle pump, like NO2 or nitric oxide, beets are gonna naturally give you the precursor to that in your body so you get more of an effect, which means more blood flow, more nutrient delivery, and also a great heart benefit. So this is the find of the day because this is, first of all, $6.49, a good price, and you get these little packs that have, yeah, this is so cool. So you get these little packs in here where you could just be on the go and have your post-workout carbs. Super cool. That is the find of the day right now. You know what, this is, it's a good thing to talk about at least. We've got raw honey, 
agave, SoCal unfiltered honey, maple syrup, and a really high quality maple syrup. Um, all of which are going to be high in fructose, which would not be the best sweetening alternative. Agave is going to be one of the worst because it's concentrated, concentrated, and it's also heavily altered, heavily processed, and some documents will even show that it can be worse than high fructose corn syrup. So I feel like agave is a little bit of a scam. Not a big fan of that. Organic raw honey, not bad, uh, still high fructose. Basically, cut to the chase. Out of all of these, if you go maple syrup, you're going to have at least a little bit of a fermentation effect that happens with maple syrup, so slightly better. Now, of course, it's expensive, and it's a, not the cheapest way to sweeten your tea or something like that, but if you're interested in these sweeteners, that's gonna be the best way. You're probably not, because generally speaking, they're not what we're after. So I took another pass through the pasta aisle because I was trying to find, I do know Costco carries it. I've seen it at other Costco's. It's called Bonza. This video is not sponsored by them. Um, I was just, it was one of the things I had in mind to show you because Costco, I saw it at Costco. So it's a chickpea pasta. So I'm going to shout them out because it is straight up chickpeas, pasta made from chickpeas. And it was like the focal point of a lot of this video as far as a great keto find. So it's invisibly, Maybe in post, you can put an invisible box of Bonza in this cart because it was a pretty darn good deal from when I saw the other day that I was in here. But apparently people are buying it. I bet you Bobby over at Flav City did a video about it and that's why they sold out. Damn you, Bobby. Fun fact, one time when I was uh, finishing up about a 55 mile backpacking trip, uh, we were coming back into the trailhead do you ever hear just like partial conversations that people have? And it's just the funniest thing in the world because you pick up just like a snippet of their conversation and it's just the weirdest stuff. So we walk by this guy and he goes, all I hear him say is, well, we all know that snow plows are bilinear. And that is something that has stuck with my wife and I for about 10 years. Whenever there's a break in a conversation, we'll just be like, snow plows are bilinear. So, what does that mean? All right, there's nothing really here uh, on this side. Right knee to the, oh no, this is it. I thought it was gluten free, it's not. Whoa! Okay, that's not gonna work. Yeah, it's semolina wheat. Actually, I mean, if you were not afraid of gluten, like I am, uh, at least it's a nice blend. So, not gonna fly though. I thought it was a, something different. Okay, as far as antioxidant rich berries are concerned, acai is a great route to get. We've got these convenient roll packs where, look at this, how low these carbs are in carbs. So you get one little pack. 15 grams of carbs, which is all going to be relatively low glycemic berry sugar. But the antioxidants that you have in acai are exceptionally high. That being said, you can get similar antioxidant profiles out of raspberries, blackberries, and blueberries, mainly blueberries. So out of all of these different fruits here, ideally I'd like to find some blueberries. That three berry blend is a great price, 9.99, 15 cents per ounce, versus 32 cents per ounce, double the price for acai, and the profile is not significantly better than what you get out of two berries. So I know that Jane Fonda and her thigh master is telling you that you should be putting this in your smoothie. I love you, Jane, but you could save some serious coin if you just go with regular berries, okay? Uh, let me see if they have some blueberries. Try to avoid the tropical fruits. The tropical fruits are much higher in sugar. They used to have like a, some wild blueberries, but I don't see them anymore. Whatever. Now we're in business. 16 cents an ounce. Okay. Perfect. So 16 cents an ounce versus 15, you know, 156. Slightly more expensive, but since you're getting so much in the way of the azazanthin and also just the various phytochemicals, phytonutrients, not phytochemicals, that are in there, much better. Let's check out this shredded chicken cauliflower rice bowl. I've talked about it in other videos. It has cauliflower rice in it, but it does not mean that it is just straight up cauliflower rice. Uh, dark chicken meat, tortilla, yeah, that's right. We talked about this one. This is the tortilla chips. It's like you're getting the carbs in the tortilla chips and the corn masa flour that's in them. So that's really it. So 29 grams of carbs, where is it coming from? Tomatoes and corn chips, it's just, if you're going to eat carbs and you're going to be having maybe some kind of like cheat meal or something, this is just not the way to do it. If you're gonna have carbs, have some freaking carbs. That's kind of one of those things that's gonna put you in that gray area again. 
It's like you're not going to feel like, oh, I'm going to eat some carbs, I'm going to have this cheat meal or something. That's not really doing anything for you. It's just like negligible amount of carbs, but enough to not be keto. And you catch my drift. Oh, it's vegan and gluten free. It's just a dessert dip. Whoa, wait a minute. This is cool. This is cool. Whoa. Almost got it. I'm so excited. I almost dropped it. This is way different than what I thought. Look at Okay, in garbanzo beans, so they made it like a hummus kind of. Chickpeas, pumpkin, which is already tremendous prebiotic fibers, water. They use turbinado sugar, which is still sugar, but I just love that they're actually making an effort. Coconut oil, sesame tahini. I just filmed a video today talking about tahini because it is straight up so rich in antioxidants and is one of the only polyunsaturated fats that you can have that is not going to denature and go through lipid peroxidation and change the entire peroxidation value and profile in your body. Nerd way of saying is one of the only good polyunsaturated fats. Cultured dextrose, that sucks. <laughs> but they're calling it an all natural digestive enzyme. <laughs> um, that's, that's a joke. <laughs> okay, they're saying it's dextrose, but we cultured it so that it acts as a digestive enzyme. I call nonsense on that because the pumpkin would be a digestive enzyme in itself. Uh, rice milk powder, probably just to thicken it, but it's down towards the bottom. Pumpkin pie spices, sea salt, some xanthan gum, some non-dairy based nisin, um, and guar gum. There's a few ingredients in there that are not perfect, but this was hands down way better than I thought it was gonna be. And if you were looking to have a cheat meal thing, that is pretty cool. Made from chicken, the meat. Okay, I'm getting that. This is where I think we might find some interesting stuff in sort of this refrigerated section here. This one made, this one made my cheat meal cut because I am such a fan of tamales. And usually you find gluten in tamales. This one's you don't. Now, it's still not amazing, right? Whole cooked corn. I mean, it's a tamale. Come on, guys. But there's no gluten in it. It's a relatively clean. And this is a roadshow item at Costco. I don't think it's going to be here forever. But if I was doing a cheat meal, Oh my gosh, that would totally be in the mix. So I am a sucker for tomorrow. Baked scalloped potatoes. Well, potatoes, whole milk, cheddar cheese, nanomycin, butter. All right. Quite a bit of fat in conjunction with the carbs there. And it is fairly clean though. I mean, it doesn't have like a lot of weird, weird stuff in it. But you'd be better off to just make them yourself. According to the wise, if you're going to bake a potato and stuff like that, you should try to keep it as lean as you possibly can. Just because of that whole thing I talked about with the spiking the insulin and everything like that. It's like microwavable mashed potatoes. We got potatoes, whole milk, butter. Much cleaner. Let's see, I love this guy. Some oven roasted potatoes. Okay, we got, yeah, just red, yellow, and purple potatoes some avocado oil, some sea salt, and some black pepper. Not a single preservative in sight, nothing weird, just flat out potatoes and a tiny bit of avocado oil, because look at the fat crunch in here. A half a cup, there's only six grams of fat. You compare that to some of these other ones, and yeah, there's gonna be 11, 12 grams of fat. So we don't have that much of the fat, not to mention at least the fat that's being used is avocado oil, which is going to A, be able to handle a high heat, but B, have a high oleic acid content that's very good for you to begin with. So it definitely makes the fat. I'm gonna get those. Maybe we'll have those tonight. Organic brown sugar baby sweet potatoes. Organic baby sweet potatoes, organic brown sugar, organic butter, maple syrup, cornstarch. So they add some things in there to make them a little bit, um, I don't know, get them a little bit more of that texture by adding some like cornstarch and stuff to them. I don't think it's really necessary. Let me tell you, the main benefit you're getting out of this is gonna be from the sweet potatoes. So what I would recommend is getting your own sweet potatoes, getting them in wedges, whatever, or cut them in wedges, Bake them, do everything the same, except get some like Lakanto maple syrup or Chalk Zero maple syrup, uh, which by the way, I mentioned Thrive Market. You can get those at Thrive Market straight up using the link down below and just drizzle like a low carb. So even if you're not keto, even if you're having a cheat meal, get your healthy carbs from the sweet potatoes and glaze them and make them caramelized and sweet with, you know, allulose, erythritol, stevia, uh, anything, monk fruit. That way you don't have to have the sugar, but you get all the actual benefit of the starches. So that's not gonna get cut because of, well, hey, look at that price we see for this too. In the same kind of ball game, we have carrots, which aren't as carbohydrate dense as people think. So one sixth of this is actually only 14 grams of carbs, three of which is fiber. 
and that's gonna be put you at 11 grams of net carbs. But what do you think most of the carbs are coming? They're coming from the Maple Dijon glaze. Water, organic, whole grain mustard, white vinegar, filtered water, whole mustard seed, and sea salt. Oh, actually, no, they're not. They're coming from the maple syrup is what they're coming from, and the honey. So if you'd made this without the maple syrup and the honey, that carbohydrate number would probably be more like eight or nine. Why do carrots get such a bad rap? Somewhere along the line, someone said that carrots are high carb. I like things that are sweet with a little bit of carrot extract and carrot puree because they're actually quite clean. Um, this is just a little bit expensive and it's got that extra carb in there that I don't really want. I'm trying to find a lower sugar item. All right, so I got my carbs. Probably not gonna eat them right now. The good news is they'll probably stay good until like 2055, so it's all good. So remember, the rule of thumb here isn't just going to Costco and load up on as many grains and carbs as you possibly can. And if you are a subscriber of my channel and you normally do a low-carb protocol or keto and things like that, these are the perfect kinds of things that you can have now and then. Just to give yourself a little bit of something different when you're off of keto, but something clean at the same time. Anyhow, as always, keep it locked in here on my channel. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and leave a comment on the specific grocery hauls you want to see me do in the future. I got the old ranch truck here, old faithful, 230,000 miles. Never getting rid of this bad boy. Or this big girl, I guess I could say. Keep it locked in, I'll see you tomorrow.